Hello everyone, welcome to Sailor School. In this video, we will be talking about SART. So the main agenda of this video is to understand what is SART and we will look into its working. Suppose if you receive a SART signal when you are on bridge, what you are supposed to do and the SOLAS requirements for SART and also we will be talking about how SART is stored tested and what are the maintenance we must carry out at regular intervals and finally finishing this video with the topic cancellation of false alert where the SART can be accidentally activated which is causing a false alert to be transmitted how to cancel such false alerts what is SART the full form of SART is search and rescue radar transponder which is a portable device. Portable means you can take it or carry it anywhere. And it is used as a complementary distress alerting system. Means it is an additional mode of sending a distress alert. So basically what does the SART do? The SART enables any ship, airplane or an helicopter which is involved in search and rescue operation to locate the survivors easily by just using their X-band radar system. The working of SART can be divided into three main phases for your simple understanding. The first phase is your activation, second phase is detection and the third phase is acknowledgement. In the acknowledgement phase, even the sender gets an acknowledgement that someone is receiving their signal as well as the receiver who is part of a search facility or a vessel also shows a different type of display to ensure that they are acknowledging the signal of a SART that has been activated by the survivors. So now we are talking about the activation. Basically the SART must be carried onto a life raft or a lifeboat when you are abandoning the ship during a distress situation. After carrying it to the lifeboat or life raft, it should be deployed at a height of at least 1 meter above the sea level and be switched on immediately into its standby mode. So this will allow the SART to respond to transmissions from vessels, helicopters, planes which are involved in a search and rescue operation and they will be carrying the X-band radar. So the SART will be responding to their X-band radar transmissions. Now moving on to the second phase that is detection. When the search facilities which has X-band radar operating in their search area or executing a search and rescue operation is detected by SART. So when it is detected the SART will switch from standby mode to the transpond mode. Transpond mode is where the SART will give audible and light indication to the survivors. So this indication is a part of acknowledgement on the SART side. Similarly, the search facilities which has X-band radar on that there are certain radar patterns to ensure the distance between the SART which has been activated to the ship which is searching for that SART. When the search facility is more than one mile away, a line of 12 equally spaced dots, the distance between the two dots is 0.6 nautical miles and this will be visible on your X-band radar screen. And similarly, when the distance between the SART and the search facility is less than one nautical mile, then these 12 dots will start to change into arcs. And later, when the search facility is in the proximity of the SART, these arcs will change into consecutive circles. After the search facility gets consecutive circles, you can be sure that the SART is in the vicinity and you are supposed to observe and target the SART visibly. During the abandoned ship, when you are carrying SART, there is a specific way that you are supposed to deploy a SART so that the efficiency of the SART 
will not be hindered by any harsh weather or sea conditions. To achieve the maximum detectable range, the SAT should be mounted vertically at least 1 meter above the sea level. Increasing the height of the SAT will increase its detectable range because the radio waves the SAT transmits uses a line of sight type of transmission as we discussed in earlier videos. Additionally, the SAT must not be obstructed by any metal objects or by an inflatable radar reflector, which means when the SAT is activated, never use your inflatable radar reflector so that the SAT signal will be much efficient towards getting detected by any search facility. If the SAT is mounted at least 1 meter above the sea level and the X-band radar is at least 15 meter above the sea level, then the detectable range of maximum 5 nautical miles is possible. So this range of 5 nautical miles can be increased up to 40 nautical miles when a helicopter or a plane flying in this search and rescue area at an altitude of 1000 meters or above. You can notice how the SAT is rigged inside the life raft in this picture. Mostly the SAT will be provided with a telescopic pole which is to be enabled and held at least 1 meter above the sea level that is external mounting and a SAT can be deployed by a lanyard or a strap which is inside the life raft. It is an internal part of a life raft. It will be already present. So you're just supposed to hang your SAT after switching it on inside a life raft. This also help in increased efficiency of the SAT which has been activated. Now let us talk about the SOLAS requirements of the SAT. All SOLAS vessels which are under 500 GRT must carry at least one SAT. All passenger vessels and cargo vessels of 500 GRT or more are required to carry two SATs. So basically less than 500 GRT, one SAT, more than 500 GRT, two SATs must be available. SATs must be equipped with a battery which has a capacity of at least 96 hours in the standby mode and 8 hours in the transpond mode. So we have discussed what is the standby and transpond mode earlier and an IMO symbol which should indicate the location of the SAT must be depicted at the location where this start is stored. A SAT is normally stored in a life raft but more commonly it is mounted at an accessible point on the vessel. Accessible point is the point or the place where a person should be present during this abandoned ship always that is known as accessible point. For example, a place next to the emergency exit or a navigation bridge of a ship is the most common areas where the additional SART can be present. Okay, now let us come to the testing and maintenance of the SART. As you all know, SART is an important device as it comprises inside the GMDSS equipment and used to send a distress alert. So it is a kind of a safety device. So since it's a safety device, it must be regularly checked. At least every month, you must visually inspect the casing for cracks. If the SART is stored in an exposed position where the weather criteria might affect the SART, so regular cleaning must be done. If the SART is supplied with a pole, then check the pole that it operates correctly. Check to ensure that the lanyard is neatly bundled and firmly secured to the SART. And make sure that the IMO symbol present on top of that is clearly visible. Check battery, expiry label shows sufficient battery life to cover the next routine voyage perform a functional test of the SART. Hold the switch on the SART in its best position. And after all these checks, you are supposed to carry out a live test of the SART, which is also known as a functional test. 
hold the switch on the SART in its test position. Now on the vessels expand radar display, you will see a concentric circles covering the whole radar display. When this is visible, your testing is completed and the SART is efficient. After this test, you are supposed to bring it back to the middle position or the neutral position and later store the SART in the same manner in your respective stored position. Suppose if you are trying to test the SART and there are no concentric circles appearing in your X-band radar, what are you supposed to do? Or what if any of your SART fails the monthly checks? Then it must be returned to the supplier or an authorized service agent. If the battery is beyond its expiry date, the SART must be returned to an authorized service agent for a battery change. So most of you people might be wondering why can't we change the battery? Of course you can change the battery provided that it is present on board and the person who does it has the authorization. So basically the battery of the SART will be inside the SART, right? So we will not be knowing what if you are not able to connect a battery properly and later a real time emergency if the SART is dropped inside the water and the battery gets short circuited or something else. So due to all the specific factors we are not supposed to carry out this operation on board uh, such as battery change or tampering with the SART. So basically most of the people will not do it. Authorized service provider will take this job. Suppose if you use the SART in case of emergency and the battery has been drained because once you activated it will be in either standby mode or in dormant mode. So once you have activated for the purpose of distress or you are accidentally activated the battery will be completely drained out. So you are supposed to send it to an authorized service dealer for a battery change. So now imagine you are the officer of the watch keeping a lone watch and you're receiving a SART signal from a far away place. So what you're supposed to do? First thing as an officer of the watch, you're supposed to call master. After the master comes, what are the steps that should be done? What basically to be done is that you will inform the nearest RCC as soon as possible because once they get this intimation, then they will start the search and rescue operation accordingly. Try to contact any survivors by VHF on channel 16 because the GMDSS handled VHF could be carried by any survivors who are present near the SART location. Try to identify the location of SART visually so that visually you can also observe if there are any survivors nearby the SART. Alter the course to search for a life raft at a SART location if possible. So that is all as an officer of the watch, all these things you can do. Suppose by mistake or due to any other internal issue of the SART, an accidental activation of the SART will happen. Okay, assume that. So what you're supposed to do next, you are supposed to switch off the SART immediately and transmit a DSC safety alert on VHF channel 70. We are doing this on VHF channel 70 because SART has a specific range of nautical miles like 10 or 6 depends upon your weather and etc it will be doing only in the range of VHF so you are supposed to send a DSC safety alert stating that it was a false alert and transmit a safety broadcast by radio telephone on VHF channel 16 to all station you must indicate your ID of the ship position of the ship and that you are wishing to cancel the false alert which was transmitted because of a error. So all these things which I have learned right now or almost each and every detail of the SART has been included. So this is it for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope that you like this presentation and uh, please do subscribe to Sailor School for more interesting content.